Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in this video we're going to do a little bit of production work. Uh, usually here in the Tin Barn uh, what I make is usually a one-off, maybe two-off item. Uh, lots of times they're tools uh, for other projects that don't necessarily get videoed. Uh, but today I've got a, a project that's going to, uh, I'm going to need to make 16 pieces uh, pretty much just alike. So this is going to be a production run. What it is, a friend of mine uh, recently contacted me. He got some, this is carbon fiber, uh, 0.875 diameter, uh, 7 eighths of an inch. Has, it's thick walled, has 60 thousandths uh, thick wall. As I say, these are four foot, piece, four foot long pieces. He wants to be able to join these. He's got eight of them. And he wants to be able to join these to make outriggers for his uh, uh, offshore fishing boat. Uh, this is kind of going to be a prototype uh, all the way around. What we'll be making is we'll be using some one-inch aluminum round stock. Uh, these will be cut to uh, 2.4 inches long. I have a uh, some 12 inch stock and so and get five pieces out uh, uh, comes out to 2.4 inches there'll be 1.75 uh, inches bored out on the inside that will fit over fit over the end of the carbon fiber of course it'll be glued on uh, we'll probably use some hairspray uh, that gorilla glue, uh, gorilla glue stuff uh, to put that on I told him I would double check and be sure it's not uh, doesn't have issues with with salt salt climate, which I don't think it will. But then in one end or both, the end will be threaded. The other five eighths of an inch will be threaded for five eighths eleven studs. In this one, I've just got a uh, a grade eight bolt grade eight bolt cut off in there. But what we're going to actually use is stainless steel all thread that will cut the length and thread in one side. The other side will be uh, bored, drilled and tapped, knurled. I'll get to that in just a second. But it will be left female. So the two pieces can be joined, in, joined together. The purpose of the knurling on here is as I say, this will be used on an offshore uh, boat fishing, and I'm sure hands will be slimy from fish, from bait, from whatever. So the knurling is just there to uh, to assist in taking them, putting them together, or taking them apart. Now, I'm not sure we'll get to it in this video, but in addition to uh, to these sleeves that will uh, join the the ends together, there'll be a ring on here where the outrigger line, it'll have a hole in it, and the outrigger line will go through that. Uh, again, I'm not sure we'll get to that in this video, but we're going to get set up, and of course I'm not going to show you doing the same operation on 16 different pieces. I'm going to show you each operation, probably on one piece, start the second piece, and then do the rest off camera and move on to the, to the next step. So let's get set up over on the saw. As my friend Harold Waters says uh, over at the Amateur Redneck Workshop, check his channel out if you haven't already, but as he always says, every project begins at the saw. So I've got a stop set up here on 2.4 inches. And for sawing aluminum, I like to use a little WD-40 on it just to help move the chips away.
and we'll repeat this process until we got 16 pieces. All right, we've got our uh, pieces cut to length now, and for the most part, the rest of these, uh, this project, or on this piece, is going to involve the lathe. So I've put the collet chuck on, and evidently my stock is just a little bit big, but uh, I'm using one inch collet, and this is supposed to be one inch material. But what we're going to do in this step is face both ends, and then we're going to uh, center drill just one end. Now the end we just faced, of course, we're going to turn in. Again, while we're right here, we're going to center drill one end. So we have both ends faced. Now I'll continue that process on the other 15 pieces. Okay, the next couple steps in our production run is first we're going to, uh, of course, got a piece mounted in the uh, collet chuck again, and I put it in with the center that we uh, drilled uh, in the last uh, step. I've got it sticking out now. Got the collet chuck tightened down on it, of course. We're going to drill this with a 17 30 seconds drill bit, which is the uh, tap drill for the uh, 5 8 11 that we'll be putting in one end of this. But we're going to drill it all the way through uh, with this and then we'll, while we're in the lathe, we'll go ahead and bore out one end. We're going to drill all the way through, then bore out one end to the uh, inch and three quarter depth. Alright, now that we got it drilled, we'll get our boring bar into place here. And what I've done is set the depth on the boring bar uh, to the inch and three quarters from the edge of our uh, boring bar holder. That'll be my visual stop. I'll keep making several passes like this until I get it uh, close and then I'll bring your bike back. Okay, the DRO says we've got about 28 thousandths left to go. I'm going to take, uh, take about 18 of them now to begin with. I machined a couple of these uh, off camera just to try to get the DRO set 
and I'm, I'm using the same setting from piece to piece. And this bore in here, remember, we want to, uh, we don't want it to be a press fit by any means. We definitely want to leave some room for the hairspray uh, or Gorilla Glue uh, to bond this piece to the carbon fiber. While we're right here, we'll deburr that inside edge. And hit the outside with the file a little. Alright, so we have a piece board. And we'll come back uh, in the next steps of our uh, uh, production work and tap this tap this in but for now I'm going to continue on doing this uh, got of course numerous more pieces to uh, to drill and bore we'll bring you back when we get ready for the next step okay I've got all the pieces uh, drilled and bored out to size the final step will be to thread this this end down here uh, and knurl put about a 5 eighths long, 5 eighths inch long knurl on here. But some of these pieces come out with kind of a, uh, uh, the drilling didn't produce a really clean surface on this, on this back side. Got a little ridge on there. So I think what I'll do is one more cycle through the uh, collet chuck and just deburr and put a little countersink on this end where the thread will be. That'll give a little bit of a thread start as well. Won't take much there. And if you haven't caught on yet to what I'm doing uh, or how I'm doing this production run, I'm trying not to do any tool changes uh, for each step. In other words, I'll do a, I'll do all I'm going to do to uh, all 16 pieces with one tool set up. All right, got all the pieces uh, deburred on this end and a little counter bore on there. So I'm going to run that in the chuck again. Now this, is, if this was uh, metal or steel of any type, being a 5 8 I would probably uh, single point that, but since this is aluminum, I'm just going to run a tap in. I think think it'll work fine. I got the RPM turned down to about 200, about 225, 250. Got my finger on the stop button. For what we're doing right here, this is a whole lot easier than, than single pointing it. Now we're going to knurl a section on the end down here. Take my calipers and mark off about 700 thousandths. And we're going to knurl up to the point that we uh, make that mark go away. And I'm just going to, I've got the depth set on the knurling tool already. And I'm just going to wind the compound in. I'm sorry, the uh, cross slide. Until I'm centered on the piece. Engage it. I'm feeding this way now. Not sure how much you'll be able to see on this. Uh, may have to get the camera in a different position to give you an idea of how this knurling is going. And once I've got to my mark, I'll stop it, reverse the feed, 
and feed back out in this direction. I'm not changing the cut. I've got this is aluminum. I can cut all I need to cut in in this single pass or to and fro pass. And once I know I'm completely off this end, I can just back back off this nice and slow. This is one tool change I will be doing, or am doing, uh, in this whole process, but this rolled over a, a, a little edge on the end, so I'm just going to chamfer that just enough to move that, remove that edge. Alright, let's see if we can get this out where you can see a little better what we got. Got something to grab onto now. Alright, so we've got this end board to slide over our carbon fiber. We've got this end threaded where there'll be a stud in one, male on one end, female on the other. They'll match together and got the knurling. I'll get the camera positioned down here so you can see the knurling going on a little bit better. Okay, I'm sure many of you watching this are familiar with knurling. But uh, in the event there's some that watching that are not, uh, I wanted to get the camera a little better position. Hopefully you can see on the on the screen where I've uh, scribed my line there at 700 thousandths over. I've got the wheel, the wheels on the scissor type knurler uh, about hanging about half on over the end. So what I'm going to do is. In, Engage, and again, I'm going to bring the uh, cross slide in until both wheels are by eye centered over the workpiece. Now, I'm going to engage the, the uh, carriage feed. Ordinarily, I would keep this well lubed, but for the uh, purposes of this video and the ability to see my scribe line I'm going to do it dry and I'm just coming in until my uh, till the neural takes over that scribe the scribe line covers it up all right I will stop the feed now turn the lathe off I'll reverse the feed and engage it. And I'll put a little lube on there now just to help flush out those chips. Now once I've got at least half the wheel hanging over, I'll just back the uh, cross slide out, disengage the feed. I'll put the uh, chaperone tool on just to remove that little edge it rolled. Alright, I hope you can see that now. We've got a nice neural, diamond point neural uh, that will make gripping on an offshore, offshore boat much simpler. Okay, we've got all 16 of our end sleeves machined. Uh, they're bored out threaded on the ends, knurled. I have not uh, used a thread seal 
on the stud parts yet. Everything is going to get a complete wash over uh, in the parts parts washer before we glue anything together or or before we seal the threads in and glue these uh, onto the ends of the carbon fiber. The next thing we want to do though is take some more of this one inch round stock and make some end caps, protective end caps for these threads. Uh, I won't do a lot of narr narration on that uh, simply because it's it's pretty much the same steps we did here. Uh, I'll put a long piece of stock in, in the lathe, I'll knurl a section, drill it with a tap drill, but not through drill. I'll drill probably about three quarters of an inch and then using a bottom tap, uh, tap uh, one end of it, then part it off. Okay, I said I wasn't going to do a whole lot of narration on these uh, end caps or thread protectors, and I'm not, but I'll just try to give you a, a quick synopsis of what I'm doing. I got my knurling tool uh, still set at the same depth that we were using uh, making the uh, end sleeves. Got my RPMs down to about 250, and I'll bring this up until it's Riding on top, centered on the workpiece. And I've got my workpiece uh, stuck out here far enough that I can knurl probably about three pieces uh, at the time. Okay, I'll stop the feed, let that sit there and roll just a little bit to clearly define the diamond at the end. Now I'll change directions. I'm not setting, the, not setting it any deeper. I'm just going to make this uh, exit pass just again to help define the knurl a little more. All right, now that we got us a good section knurled off, I'm going to drill this with the, uh, the tap drill again for the uh, 5 8 11. And I've got the depth mark marked on my drill. Since this is a blind hole, uh, it doesn't doesn't want to run that tap in too easily as it did the through hole. So we'll just do this manually. And I'll finish the tapping process over on the vise. I've got a vise with soft jaws in it. So I'll bottom tap. I have a a bottom tap here that I'll fin again I'll finish out <coughs> on the uh, with it in the vise. We'll set the zero for our depth. Go to one inch. Make sure I got the feed back in the right direction. Put just a light chamfer on the threaded end, just enough to clear up that rollover. Then put a heavier chamfer on the uh, on the blind end. And finish parting it off. So there's our, one of our end caps. It's a bit warm right now. 
As I said, I'll finish the tap, tapping over on the uh, uh, on the vise with the soft jaws. All right, all eight of the end cap uh, thread protectors are done now. I'll put them, these in the basket of stuff to be washed. We got one more piece on this project to uh, to machine, and that's this uh, line holder. As I said, these are going to be outriggers. This will be on the end of a piece of carbon fiber rod. This sleeve will go over, or ring will go over, and tighten down. Now there will be several of these in length, and this eyelet will be for the line to run through. So we're going to turn back to the lathe and make, he said he wanted eight of these, <clears throat> but the uh, stainless steel eye bolts that I've got come in five packs. Uh, so I'm going to make him 10 of these sleeves. To make the rings for the outrigger line, it's a pretty simple process. We're starting with an uh, inch and a half round stock. And I'm going to drill a pilot hole, or a lead hole. Next we're going to drill with a one inch bit because that's the largest I got. Now since the uh, piece that this has to slide over is one inch, that would be too tight of a fit with the uh, knurl that was put on. So what we need to do is bore out just a little bit. So I'll touch off and we'll take about 40 thousandths. Last thing he needs is to have to struggle with getting this on and off when he's uh, out there trying to get his line in the water. Now we'll use our parting tool, set zero on the DRO, come in a half inch, keep our hot work piece from falling into the drink. We'll simply put a, a catch rod in the tailstock. To get our workpiece prepared for the next one, we'll come in and face off this end. Put a slide, cha <clears throat> put a slide chamfer on the inside. One on the outside. Now when I get this process done on all ten of the pieces, that cut that I made in here, I'll turn it around in the uh, in the lathe with the spider on, and dress up the end just like I uh, put the chamfer on the inside and outside. So I'll continue this process. All right, the next step on these uh, rings for the outrigger lines. Remember, one side when we had it had it out here, we faced and. Uh, chamfered both edges. So I've got the lathe spider in now. Let's give it a little tap just to keep it from rattling quite as much. Now we'll come in and face off this edge. We'll give a little chamfer on that inside. Same thing on the outside just to remove any sharp edges. There we have our 
ring. The only thing left to do to this is drill and tap it over on the mill. So I'll go ahead and do the other nine pieces of this and then meet you at the mill. All right, we got one more final step uh, in this production run here in the tin barn, and that's to drill and tap a 1024 hole in these rings. Remember the rings will be used uh, to clamp over the end sleeves on the carbon fiber. The stainless steel eye bolts will clamp it in place and the line for the outriggers will run through these eye bolts. Now I can put a block in and I have off camera I've already found center by ha but by having this V block held in place with those screws I do not have to find center on each piece. So we're going to spot drill it first. And I'm going to run just a little bit deeper than normal with the spot drill. That gives me a countersink for the tap. And I will be doing tool changes in this step instead of uh, workpiece changes simply because even though this is lined up on the X and Y center, I want to be sure that remains at the top. 1024 two flute spiral tap. Go back to low range. And of course I didn't tighten it enough. And it looked like my piece wanted to rise up a little bit too, so I'll reseat it in the vise. I can see I can probably go a little bit deeper with my uh, spotting center drill to give a little bit more of a uh, recess or lead in for this thread. All right, I'll finish that on the remainder of the pieces. After I do that, uh, I'm going to wash all the pieces over on the, uh, pressure, uh, over on the uh, parts washer. <clears throat> I won't try to film that, nor will I try to video uh, gluing the uh, pieces together uh, on, the, uh, on the carbon fiber. But once I get all that done, I'll bring you back for a quick recap. So stick with me for a few more minutes. All right, I appreciate you sticking around with me if you're still here. Uh, do a quick recap. I took one of the uh, carbon fiber rods last evening and glued the ends on. Glued a female end cap on, end sleeve, and of course the male one. And I only did one last night because I wanted to test the glue. Uh, I'm using this uh, clear Gorilla Glue or hairspray and I wanted to test it, so I put a, I just did one last night, let it set overnight. It says let it cure for 24 hours, but it feels like it's going good, so I've got the rest glued on uh, and got them set over here in a, uh, just in a little jig to hold them in place to cure. Now again, the way these works, two pieces that were made off camera, this is a uh, insert for the rod holders on the boat. This will slide into his boat. I made these off camera. The female end will slide into that. And he will extend these out two, three, even four long uh, for up to 16 feet. Again, the rings, one will go on each end cap the line and then has thread protectors for the end one these little caps I realize for most of you watching this that do uh, that actually work in a machine shop 16 pieces probably isn't uh, uh, considered a production run uh, when you guys are making hundreds or even thousands of the same piece in a run but uh, normally, as I said at the beginning of this video, here in the tin barn, one or two, maybe three of an item is about the max I ever do. Uh, so I learned, a, I learned some from uh, doing this production, uh, semi-production run. 
If you've got any input or comments, uh, I appreciate you letting me know down in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.